Hey guys, in today's video I'm exploring the top 10 hidden gems in Tokyo, from the Gotokuji Temple to the Nezu Shrine. This list was curated by Elise from The Invisible Tourist. Her travel blog is hugely successful and it explores ways that you can travel in a foreign place without standing out as a tourist. Her top 10 hidden gems in Kyoto blog went viral, and we decided to work together on bringing you this list of the top 10 hidden gems in Tokyo. If you want any info on where these places are located, how to get to them, opening times and more, head to the link in my description for the full blog post. When I travel in Japan, I always have pocket Wi-Fi, and I kept the blog post open on my phone for two days while I explored the itinerary. Elise wrote this list in an order that's easy to follow when you're using public transport, and she suggests that you start day one at Gotokuji Temple in Setagaya. Make sure you get there early so you have enough time for all the locations on the list. Well, I've arrived at the temple, but unfortunately, Google Maps has directed me to the back of the temple. So luckily there is a little map here and it's all written in English and uh, it looks like I just have to walk around the perimeter of the grounds and then I'll come to the main temple. It's free to enter, I believe, but we'll check when we get to the front gate. There's little maneki nekos everywhere you look here. People have bought them and they've written little messages on them and they've sort of put them around the place. Look at the teeny, 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 tiny ones down here. They have, uh, I think they've got little names on them maybe. It's so cute. <laughs> So I just bought myself a little maneki neko. He cost me 300 yen. They come in a couple of different sizes. Uh, I actually didn't have enough coins for any other size. So now I have a small dilemma because I've got to figure out, do I want to keep my little maneki neko as a souvenir or do I want to go place him with all the others? Uh, that's what people seem to do. They seem to buy themselves a maneki neko and then they place it in the maneki neko pile, I suppose you would say. I'm thinking, I'm going to place him uh, and I'm going to place him somewhere very specific and then if anyone comes here after they watch this video I want you guys to take a photo of my little maneki neko and uh, tag me on Instagram or something <laughs> and then maybe if you buy one you can put yours next to mine. It can be like a little pretty pastel cat family that Archie would definitely disapprove of. <laughs> thing is figuring out where to put him. Hmm, where should he go? I want to find a spot that's going to be easy for my uh, friends to find so they can put theirs next to mine. Oh, okay, I've figured it out. I have figured it out. Over there.
right guys, so we're almost there. It's just a minute around the corner from the station, but obviously I decided to walk here from that beautiful temple because it's such a nice day, but it's very, very windy and the wind actually blew off my false eyelashes. It blew one of them off and uh, so I tore the other one off myself and now I look like a naked mole rat. But anyway, the place is just up ahead. Now, I think I've made a fatal error. I understand that they only make a limited number of these cream puffs in the morning. When I was reading the blog post on the Invisible Tourist, it did mention that you should get there early. Now that was my plan, but I was so incredibly distracted by the Maneki Neko that I spent two hours at that temple and I may have missed out on the cream puffs. I really hope there's some left. Oh my goodness, it smells incredible in this street. <gasps> I think we're here. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. Look at the adorable little faces on these guys. I got one of each flavor and I took down the names of all the flavors. The Totoro with the little leaf on his head, he is a custard cream. The one with the flower on its head is strawberry cream and it says limited time only. The one with the orange hat that's got a blue ribbon is chocolate cream, it says new taste. And the one with the hat that has the yellow ribbon, that one is caramel and banana and it says limited time only. Now that's the one that I'm most excited about because I love caramel. It's just one of my favorite things ever. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start off with the strawberry Totoro because strawberry is probably my least favorite flavor out of all of them. So, I mean, I don't really know how to approach this uh, in a civilized manner. I think it's just going to have to be barbaric. It's made with fresh strawberry, which is definitely different to artificial strawberry. You can really taste it. I think that they've blended up real strawberries and put it in with the cream. It's really tasty, really refreshing, very, very sweet. Probably better to leave his little diaper on so we don't have any accidents. So all the cream inside the puff seems to be like a whipped kind of cream. It's really fluffy, very, very light. The taste of the chocolate one reminds me so much of Milo, like chocolate milk. It's really yummy. I, I think I have definitely been eating these in the correct order. Starting with the strawberry, it was nice. Chocolate, better. The custard. Please forgive me for what I'm about to do. I'm so sorry. Wow. Okay, I'm glad that I haven't finished the strawberry and the chocolate because I'm gonna annihilate this one. There is no hope for this one. This one will not survive. I wish you were here right now. Ugh. However many hundreds of thousands of people that watch this video, I wish you were experiencing this. This is the most beautiful custard ever. It's whipped, it's got whole vanilla beans. I can see little black vanilla beans in here. You can taste the vanilla. It tastes fresh, it tastes sweet, but it's not overwhelmingly sweet. It is the perfect amount of sweet. Oh my goodness. Okay, and now, because I feel like I've made a terrible mistake because I left the banana and caramel until last, but that one was so good, I wish I had saved some of that, but I, I couldn't stop eating it. I, I physically could not stop myself. Something came over me, I, I suddenly turned into no face and I was just... Caramel and banana. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Once again, like the strawberry one, this is made with fresh banana. They've taken whole bananas probably, and they've uh, whipped them together with the whipped cream. There is a, a strong taste of caramel as well. Oh wow, it tastes like um, banoffee pie. It tastes just like a banoffee pie. Oh, that one's really tasty too, but the thing is, that one is a limited edition. Don't get your hopes up. If you're not planning on coming to Japan for a little while, you can't uh, expect that you're going to get that one because they're probably seasonal. 
Someone told me they saw a sakura one, you know, like a cherry blossom one. They obviously do seasonal tastes. The Totoro with the little uh, leaf on his head, which is the original one, the one that I was having a moment with, that one is always on the menu. I think that's why it was called standard item or whatever. It's always going to be there. I tried one of every flavor they had available and the one that is always available is definitely the best one. So you don't have to worry about the seasonal items selling out. Nothing beats the original. They've obviously taken the time to really perfect that recipe. It's absolutely heaven. I will have a little bit more of this one though. <laughs> They charge uh, more for men than they charge for women. But I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to insert an Anakin Skywalker meme and say, You underestimate my power! <laughs> I feel emotional. <laughs> wow! This little poodle is the most majestic thing I've seen in my entire life. Look how well groomed it is. Look. Oh my god.
have eaten so much sweet food today. I could really go for a savory crepe. They all look excellent. Wow, who needs Harajuku when you can come here? I absolutely adore Nezu Shrine. This is one of my favorite places in Japan. I've been to Kyoto and I've been to the Fushimi Inari Taisha, which is the world famous gates. That place, you can't even comprehend how many tourists are there. I'm here and I'm walking through these gates and there is no one. There's no one behind me. There's no one in front of me. It's absolutely magical. I love this place so much. So I came here a couple of years ago in winter 
and there wasn't a soul in sight. The place was completely empty. If you come here on a rainy day, it's so peaceful and beautiful and there's no one else around. It's just magical. I cannot recommend this place highly enough. It's a Saturday today. There's hardly anyone here. It's so beautiful. It's perfect weather too. There's some turtles out by the pond. They're sitting completely still. They look magical. It, they don't even look real. I could stay here forever, honestly. This is a really nice place to come, bring some food, bring a little picnic or something, find a place to sit. There's some benches around. Everywhere you go, there's something to see. It's such a peaceful place. This is one of my favorite places in Tokyo and one of my favorite places in all of Japan. Look at him go. You can do it. Yes, go you good thing. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I can't even lift myself out of a pool. I'm so proud of him. Look at this beautiful kingfisher, guys. He's so magical. I'm just sitting here watching him swoop. I think he may be stealing baby turtles, but I'm not sure. I don't believe it. So I tried to come here a couple of days ago when I was filming my vegan food from 7-Eleven video. I wanted to come sit in the park and eat it. And uh, when I got here, it was 4.30 and I know the park closes at five, but the gates were closed because they don't let people in after 4.30. So anyway, when I saw this on the list for today, I was very excited because I thought, yes, finally, I get to go to this park. And I just got here and there's a, a little sign in the entranceway just here. And lo and behold, it says, Notice on closures of tea house and bridges. Owing to repair works, Nakajima no Ochaya tea house <laughs> is off limits to visitors. We apologize for the inconvenience caused. Your understanding and cooperation are greatly appreciated. Closed until mid-March 2020. Well, I guess it doesn't matter too much. I can't go into the tea house, but I will still go into the gardens because they look absolutely glorious. And today's such a beautiful day, so it would be a waste to not go into the gardens anyway. So at least I can show you guys that. If you want to visit this tea house, you're going to have to come after March. Shimoyoke. It's a special attraction of winter. It means a frost protector. It's braided straw wrapped around tropical or subtropical plants to keep them warm in winter.
So it says on the sign here, the pine is named 300 year pine because it was planted in 1709. No, I'm not adding any effect to what you're seeing right now. <laughs> that is actually what it looks like. Oh my goodness guys, I can't believe I have never been here before. I've been to Tokyo so many times over the past few years and I had no idea that this existed. This isn't on, you know, popular websites, it's not on Instagram that much, it's, I've never seen it. I don't see it in vlogs, I don't see it anywhere. This place is absolutely incredible. Look at the giant gate at the entrance. This reminds me of a gate, I think, in Nara, I'm pretty sure. The most impressive thing is behind me here. Look at that behind me. There's a temple and then there is Tokyo Tower. Wow. The sign here says, these are care guardian deities of children. They're dedicated for the safety growth of children and grandchildren, as well as for the memorial service for stillbirth or miscarried children. To protect and keep warm, their heads, red hat, red apron and windmill were dedicated to the guardian deity of children image. Please refrain from touching. Okay guys, that's it. 
that's everything. I can't believe that I have seen all 10 attractions. It has been the most magical two days I can't even begin to express. I think that the park that we just went to was the highlight of my time. It was just so breathtakingly beautiful there. I wish the tea house had been open. I just know that if it had been open, that would have been one of my favorite experiences. It was a really good way to do it, that itinerary. Start off the mornings at the places that could get busy throughout the day. Gotokuji Temple with the Maneki Neko cats was absolutely amazing. Amazing. Definitely one of the highlights of the trip. The Shirohige Cream Puff Factory, of course, I love the Totoros so much. They were too cute. Cafe Ron Ron was so awesome and I definitely recommend it if you're going to Harajuku. That new Shibuya Sky Observatory was breathtaking and I could just spend hours and hours and hours there. It was so magical to watch the sun setting over Mount Fuji. You have to do that. You need to set aside a couple of hours and just sit there and relax. It was so magical. Diugaoka was a beautiful sun. Suburb. The streets were so nice. I really wish that I'd been there during the daytime, but I just spent so long at the other attractions earlier in the day that I kind of ran out of time. I'm definitely going to visit there again during the day. I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that bridge that I saw on the blog post. Asakusa Jinja Shrine is obviously beautiful too. There's way less people there than you see at Sensoji. The Nezu Shrine is just one of my favorite places in Tokyo. You must go there. Keep an eye out for the turtles. Keep an eye out for that little kingfisher that was stealing the turtles babies the 2d cafe now that is something else that is one of the coolest cafes I have ever seen. I cannot believe that there's a place like that in Tokyo. Shinokubo is a great suburb too, so definitely add that one to your list. The Hamariku Gardens were sensational. Sensational. I absolutely loved them. And of course, Zojoji Temple. This place, I can't believe I had never seen it before until now. This is definitely worth a visit. It's so beautiful and so touching to see those little guardian dolls. It's the most magical place here and that gateway is the most insane thing I've ever seen. So stunning. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot of videos about Japan, so head over to my profile, head to my Instagram. It's pretty pastel, please. So uh, with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!